Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today, I'm going to be tackling alternative quartz technologies, as I like to dub them. Here's a Seiko Solar and a Seiko Kinetic Dive Watch. Now, both of these watches are quartz-driven watches. Uh, they run on a quartz crystal. And if you'll go back in the uh, Watch and Learn archives, I believe it's number four or so, I discuss the differences between an automatic watch, you know, self-winding, and a quartz-driven battery watch. Uh, I will go over that really fast in the beginning of this uh, in the video uh, just to kind of give a brief overview. But you may want to look at that video just to kind of refresh yourself if, if you don't remember. Uh, so basically, you know, a quartz watch is driven by a battery. A battery drives a quartz oscillator. The oscillator vibrates at a specific frequency. And then after it reaches a certain number of vibrations, the watch knows to index one second. And then all the other hands follow suit because they are all geared together. Uh, these technologies are, you know, the watch is driven the same by a quartz oscillator, but how we power the quartz oscillator is different, and how we power the hands is different. In the solar, we're using some kind of a solar cell, and in the kinetic, we're using our body's energy to transform our kinetic energy into electrical energy that gets stored in the form of chemical energy uh, in the battery. So it's all pretty cool. Uh, the watches that the watch that I'm not going to talk about is Grand Seiko. Because even though it has a quartz oscillator in it, it is truly a mechanically driven watch. Uh, I'm, I'm contemplating doing a video on that because I actually happen to have a Grand Seiko sitting around the office. So I might do a, just a, you know, a quick video on that one in the future. But I didn't want to muddy the water here because here I'm just going to talk about your solars, your Seiko solars, your Citizen Echo Drive. It's all the same topic. And also uh, your Seiko Kinetic, like that Kinetic Dive watch I showed you. Uh, really quick, my own wrist check. I am still wearing my orange monster, and then for the solar video, I'm gonna wear my Seiko Prospects World Time Solar Watch. So let's get into solar and kinetic watches. So before we get into kinetic and solar, let's just do a quick review of what a quartz and an automatic is, just so we know where we're headed. So I'm gonna bring out my, my first, uh, my two favorite samples in explaining this stuff, and I think these have been in other videos. This is a uh, Swatch Quartz Watch, which is totally see-through. And it's powered by a one and a half volt battery, which you can see down here. And you can see the black dot over it. That's for changing it quickly. You don't have to open the whole case. Actually, you can't. This watch actually no longer functions. So the way it works is this battery powers a quartz crystal or applies uh, some voltage to a quartz crystal, a little like a little quartz tuning fork. When that quartz tuning fork reaches a certain number of vibrations, uh, 32,768, I believe, per second. A little bit spills over, and it tells the watch to advance one second. At that point, the battery then powers the stepper motor, the seconds hand. Well, there's no seconds hand in this watch, but in theory, a seconds hand moves. And then through that train, the minute and hour hands move because they're all geared together. And then on a, on a conventional automatic... The battery is replaced by this spring down here, this coiled up spring. It winds with an auto winder. This is all covered in one of the earlier watch and learns, I believe number four. And then there's the escapement, which is that wheel rotating back and forth at the top. And you can see it again through this side. It's that wheel oscillating. And what that does is that helps the spring unleash its energy in a very consistent pattern of around eight times a second and that is what gives you measured timing uh, so the more accurate that this can be made this balance going back and forth the more accurate the watch will be obviously because of the heavy mechanics involved automatics are inherently more inaccurate than their quartz counterparts so that's automatic quartz so how does let's say a quartz solar differ not much, actually. I, I think it sounds a lot worse than it is, whether it's a Seiko Solar or an Eco, a Citizen Eco or Echo Drive. Uh, they all operate on the same principle. The battery is now non-user replaceable. It can still be replaced by a, a watchmaker. Uh, but it's now a rechargeable battery. And what we do is we collect the energy and we charge it. So here is a Seiko Solar chronograph. It's a really nice watch. It's got its cool silver dial. Uh, if you're keeping score, this is uh, SSC 569. 
and is powered by the Seiko V175 movement. And that is a solar chronograph movement. So how does this watch work? Well, depending on the configuration of the watch, this watch has three subdials. Uh, these three subdials, you can see they're black in color. They're actually photovoltaic cells. And they collect light, whether it be artificial light, like in my studio here, whether it be sunlight outside, whether it be office light. They take that light, convert it into electrical energy, much like the solar panels on the roof of your house, if you have them. Uh, and then it charges a little battery. And that battery is what keeps the watch running. Uh, on a full charge, the watch will run for about uh, four to six months. Uh, so it builds up a really decent amount of charge. And it has a low power warning, whereas the second hand, which you see right here on the subdial on the left, will start to tick every two seconds. And that's your indication that, hey, this watch is dying. It needs to get, it needs to, get to some light. So how long does it take uh, for the watch of this V175 caliper to get up to a full charge? Well, Seiko puts a little, um, a little table in the instruction manual, and I'll show that to you now. They could make this easier to read, uh, but in a nutshell, if you look at the top line in general office environment, if you expose it for about two hours, that will keep it going for an entire day. But let's just go all the way down to the bottom because that's where the money is. Sunlight. Uh, if it's decent weather out, if you just put it out for two minutes, that will give you a day. If you put it out for a half hour, you're looking at steady operation, which to them means it's going to run for a couple of days. It won't give you any kind of um, low power warning. And then you can see it just five hours gives you a full charge. So five hours in the sun, it's fully charged up. So if you're living in a bomb shelter with no lights, you got to peek your head up above ground. Uh, you know, every six months or so, just for five hours, uh, just to keep the watch fully charged. So that, that actually is very efficient. So you can see they also state the accuracy at around 15 seconds a month, which for a quartz watch is excellent. That's excellent, excellent timing. There is built-in protection against overcharging the watch, so you don't have to worry about, um, you know, exposure to bright light uh, for prolonged periods and what it might do to the watch. So different dial configurations, obviously this has a three sub dial. Sometimes the dial is one complete color, uh, but it's always going to be, a, there's something that's going to be semi-transparent, opaque, whatever, so that light can shine through, power the cells, and charge the battery. So what does it look like on the back? Well, let's take a look. So here it is with the back removed, and you will see it really just looks like a quartz-operated watch. We would never know that this is not a replaceable battery uh, unless we read it and we see v v175 we know it's the caliber of seiko's solar movement and there's a little note on the battery rechargeable battery only uh theoretically you could swap that battery out for a one and a half volt cell a regular button cell that fits and the watch will work just fine but obviously it won't take a charge these are rechargeable batteries uh, so the life of the watch itself is really limited to what the life of the battery is. And obviously, as with any rechargeable battery, after a number of cycles of charging and discharging, it will lose life. But of course, if it needs servicing, it is supposed to go back to a Seiko service center uh, to get that battery replaced. Although I do think a watchmaker could get that part and replace it themselves. So that was solar. Let's now discuss kinetic. So this is a Seiko kinetic diver, uh, SKA 371, I believe. Yep, there it is. This is a beautiful 200 meter dive watch with a kinetic movement. And you'll notice right off the bat, the second hand is ticking in two second increments. That means it's low on charge. Kinetics, you cannot hand wind. See, I'm spinning the crown. You can't hear, those are my gloves that you hear. Nothing's happening. Uh, this is a screw down crown, I should say. The button at the two is used for power reserve checking but it's dead. It's really, it's keeping time, even though it's moving every two seconds. And I should have said that with the solar also, even though the second hand is moving every two seconds, it is still keeping quartz accurate time. But it is telling you, hey, I need to be worn uh, or I'm going to stop. And like the solars, these build up a kinetic charge of about four to six months. And you wind these by wearing them just like this automatic here, this automatic happens to be hand windable, uh, but just like a standard Seiko diver, an SKX 007 or 009, that you can cannot wind by hand, this cannot be wound by hand, it must be worn. And then after you walk, I think it's like, they estimate like if you walk 800 meters or so, the watch will run for like a day or two. 
and then obviously after a couple of days of full activity you'll be up to full charge uh, unlike the solar this does have a like I said it does have a fuel meter you can press the button and you'll see the seconds hand move and it will show you from 0 to 30 that's your fuel gauge how much of a charge you've built up so how does this work so just like an automatic it does have a rotor 5m62 is the reference number of the movement then you'll see there's that all familiar circle and that is another rechargeable battery I, I believe they used to use capacitors uh, now they you know I, th I do think that battery technology advanced has advanced enough that they can use rechargeable batteries so it's a little one and a half volt rechargeable battery and there's your coil for powering motors and powering your quartz crystal so now the difference is when this spins can you hear that it's actually winding basically spinning a generator that generator is generating power and that power will go to charge the cell and then the cell runs the watch so we have to spin it enough so that we can stop that two second uh, interval so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some give it a little shake and we'll see if we can get this to stop doing its two second dance so after about a minute of shaking it in my hand that little rotor was spinning it was basically turning a generator which is charging the battery and now when it gets to 12 I'll press the button and we'll see uh, from 0 to 30 how much of a charge I've built up and there it goes so I built up the minimal amount to charge so it'll run for like a day or so uh, and uh, it'll stop so this will need obviously be worn the entire day uh, and day on day in day out you'll build up slowly to uh, six months of charge I should bring up my own personal prospect solar as I mentioned before that the solar watch I showed you did not have a fuel gauge but some of them do and you can see this little red arrow is pointing at F and it actually under the hour hand it goes all the way down to E uh, I wear this watch usually at least once a week I've never seen it deviate from F uh, so I hope it's working uh, I know it's working it's just very efficient and obviously whenever I use it I'm in sunlight so it does take on a, a full charge every time so this has been Mark from longislandwatch.com showing you some alternative quartz technologies the so the Seiko solar or a citizen echo drive all the same thing and the Seiko kinetic both of these are what they call green energy sources you know we're, we're keeping batteries out of landfills uh, you keep reusing the same battery and just from the users aspect it's nice because like an automatic runs for you know 40 hours these will run for six months and if 40 hours is enough for you and you need a longer time span you know maybe this is your cup of tea and it obviously has the quartz accuracy to boot if you liked this video please like it if you have not subscribed to our channel please do so at this time if you have any questions or comments please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can thanks for watching bye bye